Okay, I'm trying to put you through a few paces here when it comes to trig. If I had tangent of theta, you should be able to tell me at least two things that you could replace that with. You could pull out tangent and put in what? I'd like you to write down a couple. Today we're doing 5.1.2. Topic is really about proving identities again. And I went through all the identities yesterday, and you have good notes on that. If you haven't already done that, if hopefully you were gone yesterday, right? Was anybody gone yesterday? Okay, good. Awesome. That's that's a that really helps. Okay, so then you know that yesterday we wrote down at least two things for tangent. Okay, one was that it's 1 over what? Cotangent. So in certain situations, you'd replace it with 1 over cotangent. Okay, why would you do that? If you had a cotangent in the problem, do you get that that'd be pretty handy to replace this with a cotangent? Because then it has a chance of canceling with the other cotangent. Okay, so that's a good reason to use 1 over cotangent. What if instead the problem had like a sine or a cosine in it? Sine over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. I proved all these things yesterday, so today I'm just going to take it as facts. You should know that one. Was there any other place you saw tangent other than tangent squared? Because that was different. Is there any other place you saw regular tangent? All right, so then you're not expected to know any other way to replace this. Okay, the only thing would be maybe if this had been tangent of negative something like tangent of negative x. If they had asked tangent of negative x, do you remember what you could replace that with? Yep, there's a, func there's a function for that, and it's negative tangent of x. No parentheses really needed there, just negative tangent of x. And that's nice because then if you had your tangent cancel, the negative can just remain behind. Okay, so... That's the idea. Now, let's talk about these a little bit more. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Do you remember that one? I started with that one, then I got two others out of it that had a snappy little saying. What were the two others when you had a snappy saying? Can anybody remember the snappy saying? Yes? No, it's not a snappy saying. The one... The one with the tan is what we seek. Okay, that's one of the other identities. And then the last one, snappy saying about a coat. One, come on, with the coat is cozy. All right, yes, I'll pause for a second and answer your question. Back to you. So we've got this one, this one, and, oops, that's got a one with it, and this one. And now when do you use them? Well, of course, if you ever see a cosine squared, there's only one choice. I'm not going to use these two if it's talking about cosine squared. If it's talking about cosine squared, though, do you know what to put? What is just cosine squared? Would you please write it on your iPad, turn it my way, and I'll tell you, and I'll give me a good sense of how many kids understand this. Just cotangent, sorry, cosine squared. I just want to know, if I see a cosine squared in my problem, what can I replace it with? Just circle the part that's, like, cosine squared is what? Yes, yes. That uh, doesn't say anything. Use a like five times thicker pen if if it's really a, if there's really something there. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, no, but you were using the cozy one. That's different. Yes, yes, yes. No, you were using cozy. That was cotangent. Cosine is the one I wanted. Cosine. Yes, except the one and the sine have to be reversed. All right. I'm seeing almost everybody getting this. It's one minus sine squared. Do you get if I want cosine alone, I have to subtract sine squared from both sides? Minus sine squared. Does that make sense to you? Cosine is now alone. See, I got it to cancel. Okay. One minus sine squared. So wherever you see cosine squared, you could replace it with 
1 minus sine squared. Okay, how about this? Another concept that you, you need to get. You know what, let's do one more like that. What if it's just cosecant squared? Well, that's right here. Cosecant squared is that. That's easy. So then what if it's cotangent squared? If I want cotangent squared to be alone, what is cotangent squared equal to? Turn it my way, I'll tell you if you're right or not. Cotangent squared is what you're looking for. Everybody that's turned is my way has got it right so far. Nice. All right, so I would like you to compare with the person across from the row, the row with you. Um, you have to turn and hit the guy in the back row because he doesn't have anybody across from him, okay? So just, just like, you lean your iPad out and see if he's got the same thing. You just hold your iPad out. You need to make it like three times thicker pen because nobody can read that. All right. Uh, your two rows compare and your two rows compare. You have nobody across from you. Can you kind of turn diagonal back with her or the girl behind you either way? I'll pause for a second while I try that. We're trying cotangent squared. So to cotangent squared, you just have to subtract one from both sides. Minus one, minus one, and then this is gone, and cotangent squared is cosecant minus one. Now, I want you to think about that further. I know this gets deeper and deeper, but you've got to be able to handle this. Cosecant squared minus one, isn't that kind of like x squared minus one? Do you get how it's kind of like that? It's something squared minus one. With, if it was x squared minus one, do you get it could factor into x plus one and x minus one? I'm going to say that again. Let's say you had this uh, x squared minus uh, 16. Do you get that that can factor? And it would factor to x plus 4 and x minus 4. Get where I'm going with this? So cosecant squared minus 1 can factor into, just as if this was an x squared minus 1, cosecant squared minus 1 and cosecant, sorry, not squared, just being cosecant and cosecant plus one. I want you to just kind of absorb that for a minute. That is just like if I did this. Did you ever see a, something like this on your, on your uh, homework last night where it's just minus 1, but it wasn't squared? All right. So let's say we have cosecant theta minus 1 on top of a fraction or something like that. Okay? This is in the middle of a problem, and you're like, well, it'd be fine if it was squared. Because if it's cosecant squared minus 1, I could go look at my identities that have the squareds in them, and I could figure out which one it was. Okay. And on this lap, sorry, technical issues here. Okay, anyway, if I want to, do you get that I can multiply the top and the bottom of a problem? Let's say I put this over tangent. I can multiply the top and the bottom of a problem by anything I want as long as they're the same thing on the top and the bottom. You know, like if I want to multiply by 2 over 2, do you get why I can do that? Because it's just like multiplying by 1. That's, that's legal, right? So I can multiply by anything I want. Do you get that I might want to multiply by something to make this into cosecant squared? Cosecant but not just cosecant over cosecant. Cosecant plus one. That is called a conjugate. If I do it on the top, I have to do it on the bottom. Now, why is that good? Because then the top becomes first outside, inside, last, right? First is cosecant squared. 
Outside and inside cancel each other. That's the beauty of this. And then the last, to make negative 1 times positive 1, makes minus 1. And then cosecant squared minus 1. I'm going to pull up from my memory banks the one that's got cozy in it. The one with the coat is cozy. So then I look at this and I say to myself, oh, cosecant squared minus 1. That's just like I took a minus 1 off of each side of this. And its cotangent is cosecant squared minus 1. And then you can replace this whole top with cotangent squared. That's called a conjugate. All right. I know this is challenging stuff. Stay with me. Keep on learning as much as you can. Some of it's going to come to you a little later instead of right now. The test isn't for two over two weeks from now. But unfortunately, a week of that is spring break. So, all right. So now, uh, let's just do a few more uh, replacement kind of questions. Let's say I had a sine squared minus 1. It's at the same end. So in your memory banks, you pull up, okay, what was that one with sine squared in it? Mm, and you write it down. And then you solve it like this, and you see what that's equal to. Did you pull up this one? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then can I just move the sine to the other side and go minus sine squared, minus sine squared, and then get cosine is 1 minus sine squared. This is backwards. See what I mean? I'm supposed to be having 1 minus sine squared. And I have sine squared minus 1. You can still make the replacement. I can still put in cosine squared for that, but it's backwards. So, what do you think? Negative cosine squared. Do you get, if it had been 1 minus sine squared, it's just a direct replacement with cosine squared? They are the same thing? Do you get that? This and this are equal to each other. So if I want something that's backwards, that's reversed, then I can put in cosine squared, but I have to do something to make it reversed. The opposite of cosine squared. All right. I'll give you another one. Um, one... What's that one equal to? Pull up in your memory banks the one that has cotangent coat. What's the deal with the coat again? Hmm. So let's answer this one. Cozy. Yep. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Uh, what would 1 plus cosine squared be? No, no, not 1 plus, sorry. 1 minus cosine squared. So you go to your memory banks. You pull up, okay, anything that has cosine squared in it. The only thing that has cosine squared in it is that one with the sine squared and the cosine squared. So here's my memory banks. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then I can rearrange that a little bit, and I can move the cosine to the other side. And that makes 1 minus cosine squared, and oh, it's just sine squared. You get that? Raise your hand if you had that. Okay, good. Then, what if I had asked you for cosine squared minus 1? It's backwards. So, you can still put sine squared, but the opposite of sine squared. I can prove it to you. If I multiply both sides by a negative 1, 
this will be the same exact thing. If I multiply this by negative 1, it will make that negative, it will make that positive, and it will make that positive. So sine squared is really like 1 minus cosine squared. That's exactly what we'd expect. When you put the cosine over here, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. All right. Now, let's actually do some from your worksheet for today, the new worksheet. So everybody pull out the new worksheet. Is this actually charging? Does that have a lightning bolt going? Okay, good. 5.2. No, 5.1.2. Is that right? All right. Hold on. Got to pause for a second while I find this thing. Okay. So on number one, it says prove. Do you remember from yesterday me saying that when you're proving something, you can't change both sides. You can only change one side. You've got to keep that other side completely the same the whole way. So this secant has to stay the same the whole way. And at the end, hopefully you've got secant of x is equal to secant of x. That's how it's proven. All right, so we got to do something in here to replace some of these things. All right, so do you see something in there you recognize? Sort of like a big search going on in your brain, like a Google search of your brain, and you look for one with the tan. Ooh, I know that one. What's one with the tan? One with the tan is cozy. So cosine of x times cozy. One with the tan is Sorry. There we go. Cosine times secant is equal to secant. One to tan is what we seek to write. So it's secant squared. Oh, it's secant squared. Oh, okay. Now that makes more sense. Okay. How is cosine times secant squared equal to secant? It isn't just right away. So we have to do some kind of swap here. Either the cosine or the secant now has to be pulled out and put in something else. So search your memory banks for cosine. What are some options for cosine? Just cos. Cosine could be 1 over... Ooh, does that seem like a good thing? See, I didn't know until I actually wrote, you know, like, figured it out in my head. It's 1 over secant. Oh, maybe that will work. 1 over secant times secant squared over 1. I can always put something over 1 if I want to make fractions play nice with other fractions. Do you get that this is a secant squared on the top and a secant on the bottom and that they will cancel? In case you didn't know that, this is just like having an x squared on the top and a x on the bottom. Do you get that they can cancel? One of these can cancel off one of those and now it's just x on top? Same idea. This secant can cancel one of these secants. That's a secant times a secant. So like, it's not secant squared anymore because that part cancels. And yay, secant is equal to secant. We really should have given you more room on these, and I apologize. You guys can zoom in and you know like, squeeze in the work that way. I can't. So I suppose for you it's doable, but would you have wanted more space on this, or is it just me? You don't need it because you can zoom, I suppose. Okay, fine better for me. All right, let's move on to this next one. Uh-oh. There's co-function. Oh, my. I need to teach you about co-functions today to be able to handle this worksheet. So there's one more thing to add to your list. Remember the identities notes that you took the other day? I would now pull up those so you can keep these all in one spot. This right here is called a co-function. And I'll show you those. You'll want these written down because, again, these don't come just naturally to you. All right. So it's some notes now to add to your identities notes. Co-functions. These are like pilot and co-pilot. These are functions that go together. And I think you've noticed this by now that sine has cosine. 
technically, you know that sine is S-I-N-E, don't you? And cosine is co-S-I-N-E. Okay. And how about uh, tangent? Tangent has its cotangent. Now I'll write it all the way out. And the last thing is what? Come on. What's the pure form of that other the other two that we have? The sister functions, the secant and cosecant. Abbreviated CSC. Okay. These all kind of go together. Sine goes with cosine. They're not equal, but they go together. Tangent goes with cotangent, and secant goes with cosecant. This is the part that I don't think you know. Cosine of 30 would be the same as cosine. Let's take a guess now. It's not 30. Let me take a good guess here. I don't expect you to be perfect. You don't know, but take a guess. Guess? 60. I think you'll catch on to the pattern when you do the next one. Tangent of 20 would be the same as cotangent of not 40. It's not a doubling thing. 70. Ah. And secant of, let's say, Oh, I gotta give you another nice one. Uh, 80 would be like cosecant of 10. All right, so this is not what should be in your added to your notes page. I'm trying to help you understand it. Okay, these are good. It's not like it's wrong or whatever it told you is correct, but these are not how you're going to see them. How you're going to see them in problems is a little more obscure. But I want you to get that this plus this adds up to 90. Do you get that? This and this, and this and this, and that and that add up to 90. Okay, so I'm laying the groundwork for, I could have just given you this next thing and said memorize it, but I'm going to show you why. Here's the part that should, you know, again, if you have an iPad, you can just erase this easily if you want to. Well, don't erase it maybe until you're ready, but here's what you should put under co-functions on your identity sheet. Sine of some angle would be equal to its co-function, which is cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. What did I just do there? Pi over 2 is the same as what degree? 90. So it's like saying whatever this number is, it's 90 minus that number. Do you get how that means it adds up to 90? This and this, if you add them together, add up to pi over 2, which is 90. Yes, sir? Sine goes with cosine. Is It's its co-function. Do you get that it has the same word in it? Sine, cosine. Tangent would go with cotangent, and secant would go with cosecant. That's why they're called the co-functions. Okay? All right, so sine goes with that, and then what is the next one? Cosine, I suppose, but then cosine would go back with sine. Could I write it this way? Cosine of some angle is equal to sine of pi over 2 minus theta? Yes, it's the same exact thing, though. It's like a vice versa thing. Can you get that? I don't need to rewrite all of those because it'll make our list way longer. It's just that they can go both ways. Cosine of 20 would be sine of 70. All right, so all I'm saying is if you want to list them all, go ahead, but then these two can be reversed. Okay, now sine and cosine are done. What's the next combo? It doesn't matter, there's no order. Give me another combo. Tangent, okay? Tangent of some angle would be the same as what? What's this cofunction? Cotangent of 
not the same angle, pi over 2 minus that angle. And the last, the third set, they're about secants, secant of some angle would be equal to cosecant of, not the same angle, but pi over 2 minus that angle. All right, so these are what you need stored in your brain, filed away, organized in a way that you can get it back to it, so that when we see a problem like this that we just came across on our worksheet, that you can go, oh, it said cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And by the way, does it have to be a theta? Could it be an x? Sure, I could change all these to x's. Could I change them all to r's? Sure, but it's always going to be pi over 2. Pi over 2 doesn't change. But... This could be an R or an X or an M or whatever letter. It doesn't matter. But if you see cosine of that funny looking thing with the pi over 2 in it, you have to be able to pull up. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here. Okay. Oh, great. Cancel that. I don't know why it's gone into that mode. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm, my smart board is dying. I'm going to move to a different slide. I'm going to see if I can find that worksheet again. That's not it. That's it. Okay. C sine of pi over 2 minus y. Remember how I said it didn't have to be a theta? If you just look at the list I just gave you, there's sine and there's cosine that go together, right? So we know this part right here is going to be replaced by cosine. And if the one part's got the pi over 2 minus the y, the other part is just what? Y. And this secant I'm just going to bring down. So secant y times cosine y equals 1. I bet you there's only one little simple replacement now. I'd replace secant with 1 over cosine times cosine. And again, I don't have the room, but what you should do is, after this cancels, your final statement should be, and 1 equals 1. You know what I mean? Like you have to prove at the end that this side stayed the same the whole time and that the, the left side finally turned into 1. That's how you have a proof statement at the end, is that this is really equal to this. You, like, you get what I'm saying? If, you, if you're trying to prove it equals 4, you could not put 3 plus 1 equals 4. A proof statement is you have to do one more step past that. 4 equals 4. You have to have it exactly equal at the end. Otherwise, you haven't proved it. Okay, good. I think we're making some progress. And now you have enough that between, you know, over the weekend, now there's, of course, you're not going to introduce anything more over the weekend. So I, I don't think there's any more. Oh, no, there's one more for a double angle. You'll learn about double angles next week from Mr. Winterhalter when he's here. Okay. So let's move on to this next one. Tangent plus cotangent equals cosecant secant. Now just so you know, if you ever want to, you can take the right side and manipulate it and leave the left side alone. You know what I mean? I can just bring this side down and bring it down and bring it down if I want to. I'm not saying I want to on this one, but I could if I wanted to. The next thing we have to talk about is Reminding you that common denominators are something that you know how to do. Remember my top 20 sheets? That's the reason I want you to learn denominators when they're easy, is so that when we get here, I don't have to bring you all the way up to date with like fifth grade math of how do you find a normal common denominator. All right, so let's talk about getting a common denominator. If I have tangent and cotangent, and I want to add them together, uh, right now, they don't have denominators. The denominators are just one, so I can leave them. We're good. But as soon as I change tangent to, what is it again? 
is 1 over cotangent. That's true. Okay, if I go 1 over cotangent, that might be a way to go. Or, remember, there's another option for tangent. Sine over cosine. Either way, you get it's a fraction. Okay. Plus, for cotangent. Cotangent is what? 1 over tangent. Or, cotangent could be cosine over sine. So the next thing I want to give you is a little bit of coaching on, okay, so if you're going to have common denominators and everything, then you want to make sure that you change everything, if you can, if you can change everything into sines and cosines, another little strategy you should have in your, like, playbook. If you can change everything into a sine and a cosine, do you get how a lot of things will cancel then? If the problems, you know, sine, cosine, so and sine, sine, cosine, a lot of things are going to cancel. Okay, so if you can do that, you probably should. And I can in this case, so I probably should. So let's change tangent into sine over cosine. And cotangent into what? Cosine over sine. And I hope you don't think we can cancel those right now. We can't because this is an adding problem, right? So let's get those out of there and delete them. All right. Now, whenever you have two fractions and I want it to be down to just one, see what I mean? That's all together in one. You, you get, I'm going to have to get a common denominator to be able to add these together. As soon as I can get a common denominator so I can add them together, I can get two pieces to turn into one thing if they have a common denominator. All right, so what's a good denominator here? Well, in the past, if you had had, let me see, make it more simple, one-fifth plus one-half, do you get that 10 would be a good common denominator? You just take the two things multiplied together, right? So what's a good common denominator here? Sine x, cosine x. The two denominators multiplied. So if I'm going to have a common denominator of that times that, then this one needs a sine x, and this one needs a cosine x. Can I just do that? No, you've got to follow math rules. If I multiply on the bottom by sine x, I've got to multiply on the top by sine x. If I multiply over here on the bottom by cosine x, I have to multiply by cosine x on the top because that's equal to 1 now, and that's equal to 1, and that's why it's legal for me to do this. Okay. Now, what's sine x times sine x? Sine squared x. I'm going to have to just ignore that this problem is here and keep on writing right, right over it. It's going to be sine squared x plus, what's cosine times cosine? It would really help if I had a little audience participation here. What's cosine times cosine? Cosine squared, thank you. All over, what's my denominator? Sine x, cosine x. Now it seems pretty dismal at this point. It's like, it's getting more and more complicated. But do you know what? We've got it down to just one fraction. That's it. That's progress. Because now it was two things. Now it's only one thing, kind of like that is. So what is sine squared plus cosine squared? Come on, memory banks. One. So it's one over sine x cosine x. And it's getting close. What did I want it to be? I wanted it to be cosecant secant. So maybe I should change this to 1 over sine x and a 1 over a cosine x. Do you get what I'm saying? 
isn't this part right here, 1 over sine x, isn't that, what's that? Isn't that cosecant? And this part, 1 over cosine x, isn't that, what is that? Secant. And I did it. Because this part was cosecant. And this part was secant. And it equals exactly what it was supposed to at the beginning, cosecant x, secant x. There, I got my proof statement at the end. I don't know if you get any feeling of satisfaction out of, oh my gosh, it worked. You Hopefully you do, because... That's what needs to drive you on these, is you just want to get it to work. And if it's not working, I know that's the frustrating part, and you got to just keep pushing through. There'll be times, even for the math teacher, where I'm going, I'm not sure this is going to work. But you just got to keep trying stuff. And if that, if, you tr if I had gone down this road and it hadn't worked, i got to be okay with, okay, let me erase it all, start over again, and make some other assumption. But I can tell you this. If you ever have... Uh, two things being added together, like here. Here's two things being added together, and they equal a single thing. Do you get, I've got to get a common denominator to get them put together? Because this is two things, and they have to become one thing. You need to have a common denominator to get them added together. All right. But don't also overlook this. One with the tan. Memory banks. What's that? Secant. Okay, secant equals ooh, all of that. Okay, maybe I should have gone a different way. Or you can just keep on trying stuff. Secant is the same as 1 over what? Cosine. So I could try making that into 1 over cosine. And then cosine squared. Wait a minute, cosine squared? I know that one. Memory banks. Again, it may not come to you right away, but cosine squared, you got to go anything with cosine squared in it. Well, I guess there's sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So then if I'm trying to replace cosine, cosine right here is just, I'm going to subtract sine x from both sides. Cosine is 1 minus sine squared, and that's what I wanted. See, there it is, 1 minus sine squared. So that one's pretty much done now. Okay, I've worked through some of these with you. Obviously, you have more to do. Um, I do want you to do number six. That's a, that's a for sure. Uh, I'm going to say you can skip problem five. I wrote all over it. Not that I can't erase it here, but I wanted you to be able to skip a few of these. So we'll skip number five. And now let's go down to these, which are much easier in my opinion. I don't know. These, these aren't that bad in that at least, think of it as a simplify problem. They, if they had just said simplify that, except you know what the answer comes out to. You know what I mean? You know the answer comes out to secant. In general, I'm scared of these because they say prove, and it makes it sound like it's a proof, and therefore proofs are hard. And But really, it's more like simplify this, and by the way, the answer is going to be that. The other ones feel easier to me because it's just, you know, a simpler looking problem. The problem is you don't really know when you're done. You don't know what it's supposed to come out to. All you got to go by is if you can get it down to like one thing, you know, like cotangent, well, that's pretty simple. I know I'm done. Or if it comes out to something simple like one or zero, of course you're done. The only other thing the kids sometimes don't know is if it comes something to something like 1 plus tangent, that's also good enough. That's as simple as it needs to be. All right, so let's look at this one and, and see if we can simplify it a little bit. You remember how I was talking about factoring before? We were talking about how sine squared plus or minus 1, sorry, factors into sine x plus 1 and sine x minus 1. Remember I was talking about how you factor this into that? Okay. 
Well, along those same lines, you can factor cosine out of both of these. Do you see how there's cosine in both of them? So I'm taking a cosine x out. And remember my statement, if you can factor it, you should. Same applies here. It's usually a hint. If they give you something that can be factored, you probably should. Okay, so then I'd have 1 minus cosine squared. Oh, I know something with a cosine squared in it. And I pull up the memory banks and go, seriously, off to the side, I go sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So then 1 minus cosine, yeah, that's just move cosine over here. And it'll be sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So it can replace this with a sine squared. So now I got cosine x times sine squared x. Then maybe you should go, okay, I can replace sine squared with what? Well, I don't want to go back to 1 minus cosine squared. I just did that. But I could replace sine with 1 over cosecant. I could replace sine with sine time or sine squared with sine x times sine x, but that doesn't really help me. I just want you to know that these are the same thing. You get that? Sine x times sine x is sine squared x. Okay. We're not leaving yet, are we? All right. So trying to think how I'm going to simplify this further. I'm going to go with the one over cosecant. Uh, such a hard time writing cosecant. And I'm going to see if this helps. So that's cosecant, and then cosine over cosecant squared. Ooh, cosecant squared. There's, a, there's something with cosecant squared in it. The one with the coat is cozy. I could replace cosecant squared with one plus cotangent. That's not helping. Cosine is really the same as 1 over secant. All right, you're seeing me get stuck. Somebody have an idea? Ooh, he's got an idea. Awesome. Yep. Uh, no. Nope. Can't do that. I, I, I'm not trying to, I, I love the idea of you having an answer, but you cannot put these together and say it's cosine to the negative second. So that's two one over cosine squared. Yeah, so it's better than you could simplify it. Too. Just, just hold, just hold on though. Uh, cosine x minus cosine to the third x does not equal, what are you saying, cosine to the negative two x? That, yeah, that'd be nice, but it's not true. <laughs> yes. Ooh, common denominator. I like that idea. But I don't have to have a common denominator. Be oh, wait. I could do a common denominator. Okay, so what are you suggesting here? Cosecant under... Co so you're saying... Okay, but I don't need to get a common denominator here because this is a multiply problem. So I, I like the thought. Appreciate the idea, but... We don't need a common denominator. Oh, I feel like this one's like so close and I'm just missing one little thing. And that's okay. Do I expect you to be perfect on these? No. Nope. All right. So there'll be answers posted, but not all the answers. And then you will eventually get all the answers. Our system is going to be after you are, you know, the assignment's done and due and we have a chance to talk about it in class, then the answers get posted later in the day. The reason we don't want all the answers posted like right before class is some kids are going to furiously scribble down all the answers because they didn't do them last night. You have to struggle through them. You have to see what that's like. You have to, just like me, be stuck in the middle of a problem and go, I'm not sure what to replace here. I know you, you think that if you don't know what to do that you must be totally lost. Nope, that's what these are about. Is struggle through it, figure out, you know, what could I replace next? Did you get an idea? Ooh, we got an answer key on this one. <laughs>
Go ahead. <laughs> okay, great. Well, the good part is, at least I didn't, like, not know the answer. That was the answer, and you would have got credit for just getting that far. Thank you for checking that. But my instinct is to go further until you get it down to one. So I, I bet you honestly we'll probably replace that next year. Why do you think we put this in here? Because of the factoring piece. We wanted to show you how you can factor them. Thank you for saving me with that at the very end here. All right. So your assignment, I'm having you skip problem five. And let me see if I can skip one more thing. I know there's a hand, but I'll get you right after the video's done. Um, let's have you skip. I want you to do the common denominator on 15. Why don't we skip 14? Uh, so skip 5 and 11 and 14. All right. That's your assignment. That's all I have for the video.